So as we have said that the probability is defined as a function for the subsets of the sample space because the subsets of the sample space are called events. Because we have defined the probability in the form of a mathematical function, we need to believe in some axioms about it. So we need to meet at a common ground uh, in order to talk about probability. For example, if I tell you that the probability of an event is equal to minus three, would you believe that can a probability be minus three? Or if I say that, what is its meaning? So if you if someone says you that the probability of an event is minus, what does that mean? So do you understand something, a meaning from that uh, statement? Actually, we do not, right? So if we are going to talk about the probability of events, we need to meet at a common ground as engineers, and we need to define the function correctly. So these three axioms, axiom one, two, and three, are the axioms when, then, uh, that we certainly need to believe in so we can make further calculations on probability. These axioms are called the non-negativity, unitarity, and the additivity axioms. So let us start with the non-negativity axiom. Axiom one, non-negativity states that the probability of an event is a non-negative value, which means the probability of an event can never be less than zero, okay? So the probability of an event E can only be greater than or at least equal to zero. So we are accepting this axiom. Now, once we stick it that this is an axiom, every member of the class right now should believe that this is true, okay? Because axioms are the things that we need to believe in. We cannot prove axioms. The axioms are all common uh, assumptions. So according to this axiom, we can never talk about a negative probability. When you solve a question as an answer, if you get a negative value, and this means this is definitely wrong, there, there cannot be a negative probability. So the probability of an event can either have zero or positive value. So this is our first axiom. Now, let's talk about the second axiom. The second axiom is the unitarity axiom. It states that the probability of the sample space is always going to be one. So, because the sample space itself is also a subset of itself, we can also define a probability for the sample space itself. And the probability of the sample space itself is going to be one. This is another axiom that we need to believe in. Now, you know that the sample space contains all possible outcomes. Therefore, when you repeat this experiment, one of these all possible outcomes is going to be observed. And this will mean the sample space itself has occurred. So by accepting axiom two, we are assuming that one of the outcomes from the sample space will definitely occur. This is just consistent with the definition of the sample space. Because sample space contains all events, the probability of an event can also be at be one at maximum. So when you combine the non-negativity axiom with the unitarity axiom, from here we can also understand that the maximum value for any probability can be one. As a result, by the combination of these two axioms, the non-negativity and the unitarity axioms, we should say that for any event in any sample space, the probability of an event should be a value between zero and one, any real value within this unit interval. If you find a probability that is negative or greater than one, then this is wrong, my friends, okay? In any problem, if your calculations bring you to a result where the probability is outside the unit interval, then you are definitely making a miscalculation. Now, the third axiom is a useful axiom for us in our calculations. We are going to talk about this axiom many, many different times in our future courses. Axiom three is the additivity axiom. Now, let's just say in the same sample space, we have two events, E and F, 
and they are also mutually exclusive or they are disjoint which means they do not have any common outcome they have empty set as the intersection okay if their intersection is an empty set then the probability of their union can easily be calculated as the sum of individual probabilities the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event but this is only true if these two events are disjoint if they cannot occur at the same time okay so that is the probability of at least one of these disjoint events occurring is the sum of their respective probabilities. So E union F means what? At least one of these disjoint events to occur, right? So the probability of the union will be equal to the probability of the first event plus probability of the second event if and only if, if their intersection is empty. Okay, please do not forget about this. This equation is only useful and the intersection is empty. Now, by accepting the additivity axiom, we say that the probability of the union of disjoint events, mutually exclusive events, is the sum of the individual probabilities. And after a small sized proof, we can also determine that the probability of the empty set is zero. Remember now, empty set is also a subset of the sample space, right? I mean, it is not a usual subset, but it is also defined as a subset of the sample space. Therefore, the probability function is also defined for empty sets as well. And the probability of the empty set will always be equal to zero. Just like the probability of the whole sample space is one, the probability of an empty set will be zero. Because when you perform an experiment, one outcome should be observed, right? Empty set. Is impossible. And another thing that we can prove by combining all three axioms here, non negativity, unitarity, and additivity axioms, we can state that if we have two events in the same sample space such that A is also a subset of B, so A is a subset of B, B is a subset of the sample space. In that case, the probability of A can never be greater than probability of B, okay? So if an event is a subset of another event, then the subset event can never have a greater probability than the superset event. So these were the axioms of the probability that we have covered. It is important for you to memorize these axioms at this point because we are going to continue with the propositions of probability, most of which can easily be proved, proven by using the axioms of probability. So the axioms that we believe in about probability will be helpful for developing such propositions. And these propositions are going to help us to calculate many probability questions.